This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Bill. The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. You're listening to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Obviously, a learning a curve and process on blowing up these animals as Mike took that big green long balloon and now has just two green balls. So a little <laughs> bit of failure going on here in the world of the balloon animal world. But I guess, you know, you got to practice. I didn't even realize that's what it was. I thought it was something else entirely. What did you think it was? I thought he was making a vagina. Oh, no, he made two. I Are thought he sure? made lima beans. <laughs> Either way, it shouldn't be that hard to tell. That's what happens when... Uh... <laughs> I don't know. And he doesn't know uh-huh. when he learned to tie a balloon in. How would you not remember that? I don't know. It's ridiculous. Because it happened so long ago, I don't even know why I know how to do this. But that's what I mean. I feel like that's the thing I, I like, remember. I feel like, like that thing is like having sex with Lou Ferrigno. Kind of. Uh, by the way, uh, a comment came in. It says, speaking of little people, I met Emmanuel Lewis before, and he was driving a full-size Ford Explorer. And then they had super nice guy. I, everyone I know in West Virginia that has a huge truck, are uh, they're not the biggest guys. But Emmanuel Lewis is shorter than Gary Coleman, mm-hmm. man. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he's oh yeah, like, yeah. he's an action figure. I mean, my buddy Worm, he's like 5'1". He weighs 125 pounds, all muscle. But I swear to God, like he's got a 10-foot ladder to get up in his truck. <laughs> You know. Come on, let's go. He's like Hank Hill's dad. Yeah, exactly. Let's do it. It's all wiry. <laughs> Hello, Liesl. Welcome back to the program. I'm back. Hola. All right, Liesl. Hola. Le- what uh, what what kind of name is Liesl? Like, what is there a country of origin or? The dirty Germans, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Right. Liesl, how do you spell yeah. it? L i e s l. Okay. And it's basically um, the German's equivalent of Elizabeth. For America. All right. So, okay. You see a lot more over there. Queen Liesel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I put my diesel in the Liesel. I put my weasel in your Liesel. <laughs> yeah. My want birthday's to... actually going to be on Big Dummy this year. I'm ah, excited. Yeah. Uh-huh. I want to see the whiskers on the Liesel Weasel. Here's your question <laughs> What is the common name for diluted acetic acid? Diluted acetic huh. acid. Hmm. Diluted what acid? Acetic. A C E T I C. Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> Vinegar? Vinegar. Hmm. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. If you really want to sound fancy, could you pass me the balsamic diluted acetic acid? Mmm. <laughs> Yeah, it's our take on salad dressing. <laughs> right. Right. It's not going to be the restaurant rate yeah. now. Oh, my God. Herbed acid. <laughs> it's like a salad. It's lettuce in an name, acid bath. With name different. <laughs> right. I was at a bar the other day. Right, and we'll see you anyway. The guy goes, you want the aioli with that? And the guy kind of looks at him and goes, the fancy mayonnaise. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, yeah. I yeah, like, I nice. yeah, I do. Yeah, I do want the fancy mayonnaise. Whatever your ranch equivalent is. Right, I'll take that. Garcone. Which month gets its name from the Latin word meaning 10? 10. Mm-hmm. Uh, October? See, you would think that. You would think that. But the Caesars uh, act it up. Remember this, all right? Uh, October. Is think it September? Oct- no. May? December. Oh. oh, think about the metric system, right? So if you have a decimeter, that's a little whatever the hell, like it means ten of, right? That's right. so. October Would was for eight. eight. November was I want to say yeah. October yeah. October originally was the eighth month. November was originally the ninth month. Okay. December, was, all right. but then the Caesars did the July and August thing and effed it all up. All right, mm-hmm. it's their take on a Caesar salad. Yeah, Gotta get our guys in there. <laughs> It's an egg acid wash that we use on romaine lettuce. <laughs> an anchovy. <sighs> we call it a seizure salad. I'd rather have donkey <laughs> sauce splattered on my <laughs> slider <laughs> than that. Here's my take on donkey sauce. <laughs> <laughs> just, one, <laughs> just one squirt on a Hawaiian roll bread. <laughs> what dessert has a custard base and a burnt caramelized top? 
You know this. Creme brulee? Yes, it yeah. is, Lisa. Delicious creme brulee. Yes. I bet Mike Hawk loves some creme brulee. That's, that's vanilla, isn't it? I love creme brulee. Oh, I do too, man. That's, do one of my, that's, that's, that's the go-to. People like cheesecake? No, I'm the creme brulee. I like brulee. cheesecake. I, it's not that I don't like it. I, I go creme brulee. But Everything. I feel like cheesecake, there's more places to get it than creme brulee. I agree. Here's my problem with cheesecake. Cheesecake, I'm going to take home, right? It's a dessert, man. I've already eaten my appetizers. Oh, so cheesecake, creme brulee is like Tetris. It doesn't matter how much I've had to eat. You it can still matter. fit. Man, that S fits, and oh, it yeah. doesn't it make really you does. feel it's delicious uh, yeah. and it fits. You're absolutely right with the chocolate cake. is just too much sometimes. <laughs> game is big, dummy. 844-999-OLA. Who's our next contestant ready to play the big game? Hello, Jeff. Welcome to the men's room. Big dummy. Hey, how's it going? Hola. Ah. Jeff, are you playing for Team Sober or not sober? Sober. Sober, Jeff. Welcome to the show. All right, men's room poll today, Jeff. you got to pick uh, a body to live in. Will it be Gary Coleman, Andre the Giant, or Donatella Versace? I don't know. I think uh, Andre the Giant lived longer, so that sounds good for that one. You might be right. Well, I, well Donatella Versace, Versace is still, still alive. alive. I mean, if that's what you she want to call She doesn't look it. If that's what is. you want to yeah, call Isn't that a girl? Yeah. But it's the body yeah, side. No, I want to be a guy. It's more of this. It's, it's not about the sex as much as it is this. The what you're, what you're kind of looking at, the stature of it. The, the yeah, man. It but just, that is a difference. Yeah, that is a difference. There, there's a huge difference, and you know, and maybe I would have eventually gotten to that point. But for me, when we first came up with this, I pictured the three from there, and instant, almost like one of those those TV shows where someone's trying to figure out what house they want. And there's three options. Just like a, whoop, whoop. Mm-hmm. there was an X through her instantly. Yeah. Like she did not check anything well, on my list. You know, like, uh-uh. I don't know. I she's didn't... out. So now it's down to closet Andre. Space Garrett. just wasn't right. enough, and I need a lot of closet space. And I want, had nothing to do with yeah. her gender. I looked at her face, but no, no, that I could not do that. All right, here's your question: Whose daughter were the Eagles looking for in their song "One of These Nights"? Oh, one of these crazy old nights. You're gonna find out, pretty mama. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I know this one. I don't know that one. The Devil Himself. That is correct. The yeah. Daughter of the Devil, the devil himself. himself. Huh. All right. Is she the pretty mama? Hang on there, pretty mama. Yeah. Multiple choice. Who was the first president to proclaim a nationwide Thanksgiving Day celebration? Was it George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, or Abraham Lincoln? Uh, wouldn't that be George Washington? Oh, oh, nice job! You really? are correct. Well, oh. there a different president established the specific day it would be on, but it's still right. celebrated each year. George Washington asked for that. By the way, Mike Hawk still in the process of making these balloon animals. Mm-hmm. Comment comes in and it says Mike Hawk's balloon sculpting story is so fascinating. That Netflix should make a documentary. On. He doesn't know how he learned to do it. So what I mean, that should he be the whole. He just knows right? that he can do it. It's like someone who wakes up from a coma and then all of a sudden has these skills that they've never had before and speaks a different language. All right, they can speak a different language. They can play piano. It's all amazing. this stuff. It's amazing. You think that's what Micah? Mike had a near death experience. He got in a car wreck. And when and he came boom, back, he was an Eagle Scout. <laughs> he, he could tie any knot he, in the world. He like can I, tie think balloon that, I think like knot tying has a lot to do with this. Like if I'm, I'm not mistaken. Is that there. the skill you'd want? Right. You get bitten by uh, only as Eagle Scouts know how to tie balloons. Oh, oh, Jesus. oh, I didn't realize it's part of being an Eagle oh, Scout. Let's see two half hitches there. Mike. Wait a minute, are you kidding me? Yes, I'm kidding. Oh, <laughs> I'll tie you a bow land. <laughs> game is big dummy eight four four nine nine nine. Ola, who is our next contestant? Ready to play the big game? Hello, Larry. Welcome to the men's room. Big Ola, Ola. Game. All right, Larry, are you sober? Or not sober. Currently sober. Sober Larry, welcome to the program. Larry, I have a cat named Larry. It's very nice to actually talk to you, because I want to say, you know, like, I talk to you a lot, and you never talk back. Eh, kind of shy guy. Yep. He's pretending you're his cat, and that's weird, man. Larry, men's room poll. <laughs> Even this Larry didn't talk back. I know. Pick a body to live in here, Larry. Gary Coleman, Andre the Giant, or Donatella Versace. Who is Versace? Oh, uh, it's a lovely woman, fashion person. If you drop the lovely part. Uh, I go with Andre the Giant. Let's do Andre. You made a good choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like the guy though that said about the airplane seats, but well, sure. I was mean, saying Gary Coleman. You can fit anywhere, and you're probably comfortable. Yeah, but think if you're walking in a crowd, you can't see anything. I would say that you could buy children's clothes, and that would be cheaper, but they're really not. Yeah, you're not going <laughs> to save no, money. The you same just price. don't have to spend. Ex- yeah, trust me. But somehow, and he's just really short. I don't know if his height even counts as a little person. It doesn't. I don't yeah. think he's short enough no, to be a little. No, he doesn't even get the break. And he can't get on a roller coaster still. 
Yeah, there's a couple. Of, well, neither can Andre. You know, Donatella Versace is the it's only one who can actually legitimately enjoy herself at an amusement park. And that's terrifying. All right, your question. What river separates the twin cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul? No clue. Let's go with uh, Mississippi. That's a great guess, Larry. I never would have got that in a million years. Man, I... That must I, be, like, uh, up near the beginning of it. I would think so. You'd yeah, I'm think. sitting racking my brain this morning, and I, I was stumped. Okay. Game is Big Dummy, 844-999. Ola, do we have a new contestant ready to play the game? Hello, Matt. Welcome to the men's room. Big Dummy! Hello. Liquor and whores. Liquor, Liquor and whores. Matt, are you sober Hola. or not sober? Ola. Sober. Sober, Matt. Welcome to the show. Okay, Matt, men's room poll today. you got to pick a body to live in. Will it be Gary Coleman, Andre the Giant, or Donatella Versace? Who is well, I'm not... a white guy, so I'm going to go Gary Coleman. Figure that out. There right. you go. There all you right. go. Oh, you're going to see all the advantages that only I know, friend. <laughs> what are those yeah, advantages? Black. Short and black? Ho, ho, ho. Yeah. <laughs> Man. It's just like Jamie Foxx where you get to slap people with it. That's right. <laughs> I'm 16 inches away, <laughs> and I slapped you with my penis. Hey. At a party <laughs> in the 90s. That's why I'm bringing it up now. Right. Hey, I remember something. <laughs> All right, here is your question. All right. What kind of insect is a woolly bear? A woolly bear? A woolly bear. What kind of insect is a woolly bear? Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to have to take a pass on that one. No. Freaking cool. Caterpillar. Caterpillar. Yep. Okay. Caterpillar. What do the initials OJ stand for with regard to OJ Simpson and not out of jail? Oh, I know the first part's orthol. Right. Yeah. The next part is a lot more normal. It's mm-hmm. not juice. Uh, <laughs> oh, damn. I always orthol J Simpson. I do not know the ah, James. James. Oh, so sorry. James. Orthol James. Oh, Matt, you're going to have to wait on the line for the next time we play next week. You'll it's be our about first a contestant coming up. Just hold on. Just stay right there. It'll all be good for you. Head Chef coming up. Ted's Meat and Potato says foods will make you happy and uh, food terms that are not so appetizing or appealing. And we'll drink and toast with a shot of the day. That's all on the way. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. Hola, bitches. You're listening to the Men's Room. Our own uh, Mike Hawk furiously making balloon animals. We just got it's a, amazing. We got a real life balloon knot there. We do. <laughs> <laughs> Red Festival is uh, is coming, Micholas, and not only are we getting closer as we are nine days away from Red Festival, but uh, believe it or not, we're having a little pre-party this afternoon evening. As one right when we get off the air, we're going to uh, uh, have uh, Wyatt Oli and uh, the Wreckage come in. We're going to play two or three songs, mm-hmm. hang out, we're going to drink some beer, and if you uh, like the men's room on Facebook, we'll be doing a little pre-party, having some beverages, hanging out with those guys, and uh, doing a little pre-party, so to speak. And this whole thing, and I don't know if this is a good idea, but they inform us that they're going to stream this. Oh, yeah. Which yes, we'll be able to... Suit uh, yourself. Do uh, uh, some interviews with the guys. Uh, not only uh, Wyatt Oli and the Wreckage playing, a uh, Glen Cannon Blues Trio will be there, Woodshed, Washed in Black, New Originals are going to play as we have an all-day lineup of outdoor <laughs> drinking, outdoor music, great food. Red Festival is going to be tremendous. What? The new originals will play. Uh, we were going to have our first practice yesterday. Had to be canceled. We have not practiced yet. You understand. Oh, no, I know. Buy your tickets now. I'm, listen, yeah. Jesus I'm Christ. Just, we want to do it, man. Honestly, we we now have the songs. Mm-hmm. All right, We know the set list. We have made it that far. We were going to do our first practice uh, yesterday, and it did not happen. Uh, yeah, so we're going right. to play, but That's you know. That's great. Just leaving it at that. Yeah. Uh, even bigger bands, even more beer, and not only that, but uh, all the uh, normal shenanigans that is Men's Room Red Festival. That would include the belly dancers, the freestyle motocross. Or, I think they've got all kinds of crazy games set up. The food's going to be fantastic. If you haven't got a chance to try the Men's Room Sausage, you can do so there. And don't forget, as we drink, as we eat, as we check out a full day of live music, a portion of the net proceeds from Red Festival will benefit our friends at the Seafair Foundation and the Fisher House. So you're doing a lot of good as you're doing some outdoor drinking mm-hmm. with us. And don't forget, if you like the Men's Room on the Facebook coming up here just after the show, we're going to do a little live video. And if you haven't got your tickets yet, uh, go to mensroomlive.com. But we will be maybe offering you a bit of a discount there with the video on and everything else on how you can uh, get those tickets and save a little money. So uh, that's all coming up. Like the Men's Room on Facebook. The pre-party will be right after the show. All right, we have time for a few emails here for the Men's Room at mensroomlive.com. You've got me. You've got me. 
All right, let's jump right into uh, the birthdays, guys. Uh, today is my daughter, Kylie, pronounced Super Chug's Monkey Butts, 10th birthday. She respectively requests an owl hitting the window and the clean Germans. Again, she is 10 years old, talking about the upcoming My Little Pony movie. Uh, rock on, bitches. That from Don in Graham. <laughs> Yeah, you need to let me know when this My Little Pony movie comes out because I too will be stuck in the movie theater with my daughter hating life, being mad that she's eating all of my popcorn while I sit through this horrible movie. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah that's what I'm going to have. When is this movie coming out? Yeah. <laughs> I see this in my future. I just think the exciting thing for this, Kylie, is your mom got you a pony. <laughs> but the little one. <laughs> Shout out to uh, my pony best should be that tonight. <laughs> best friend Kate is turning 21 this year. Love her to death. Don't know what I would do without her. Can I get uh, the dirty Germans talking about being legally able to drink now from the lovely Desiree? Yeah, you are not legally able to drink, which means legally I'll be more attractive tonight. <laughs> yeah, two Germans for the price of one, <laughs> and now you can, now you can legally puke in a bar. <laughs> Guys, it's my girlfriend Kaylin's birthday. She is 22, a massive stoner. I met her while we were both cast in a musical together three years ago. We came to the rehearsal high on edibles. How about giving her the dirty Germans talking about sexy musicals? Thanks, guys. Yeah, there is no such thing until I make the fat lady sing. Yeah, I mean, most musicals are sexy. But I guess the sexiest would be Jesus Christ Superstar. <laughs> was he naked a lot in that? Yeah, I was thinking hair. Hair! Wrong one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wrong yeah. one. Jesus Christ Superstar. Sexy. No. Nine. This is not these musicals in Germany. <laughs> Jesus Christ Superstar. <laughs> Maybe we saw a different version. Guy's name is Josh. Uh, today marks my 23rd trip around the sun. I'm currently working the nights until I can get an art-related career. <laughs> Good luck with that. Uh, so can I get a suck it up cupcake and some dirty Germans? Thanks, guys. You're the best. So suck it up, cupcake. Yeah, you want an art-related career. Let me paint your face. <laughs> yeah, when you're done with that, you could suck out a few of these creamy ice. Fellas, today is my friend Zach's birthday. Can he get, uh, get a big old Leroy Jenkins? Thanks. That from the insufferable JJ. Let's do this. Leroy Jenkins! It is my lovely wife Cammie's 29th birthday today. She would love a little kid fish sandwich, followed by the dirty Germans talking about pirates. Keep on rocking that from Jeremiah. Fish sandwich! Yeah, the thing I like about being a pirate is I'm both interested in your chest and your booty. Yeah, all the booty. Mm. It's the best part of being a pirate. It's just soaking in the booty. All the booty, yeah. <laughs> like, it's almost made booty. me Jamaican, man. <laughs> cha, cha, all the booty. <laughs> the pirate booty. Yeah, German booty. <laughs> All of which is I'd like to wish my brother Robert pronounced the Beezy Bob a very happy birthday. He's the best brother and friend a guy could ask for. He doesn't know this until now, but his present this year is... Tickets to Red Festival. Red Alert is on. Can you uh, right. give him a turtle wax with a Montgomery and the Paws and you like it in the other? Thanks, guys. That from uh, Brenda and Dave the Butcher. Uh, uh, uh. Montgomery! Hello, my name is Piper, and I'm not sure how this works, but today is my dad's birthday, and I hope you guys would give him a shout-out. He listens to your show every day. His name is Dean, and he's turning 53. I know that would make his day. How about giving him your penis is too small? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't request that. Oh, oh, that was for your dad? That's it, man. And this is going to make Well, he day? knows, man. The apple don't fall Damn. from the tree. I thought guys, Piper was a girl's name. And finally, uh, saying. oh, maybe it is. Back in 1775, the United States Army was born, and two years later, in seven, uh, 1777, Old Glory was born. Happy 243rd to the Army and 241st to our Stars and Stripes. Their birthdays need a couple of uh, the Who Won't Get Fooled Again yells. I love you guys. That from Command Sergeant Major Retired Mike. He would like a who yell? A who yell, please. Can a we get a big yell. old who yell? Yes, just momentarily. I have to warm up my pipes. You know, it's not easy sounding like Robert Dalter, goddammit. You guys take it for granted. Who yell? The who yell. Who yell? 
Hi guys, here you go. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday to you, to you, to you, bitchy. Yaws and Dirty German is brought to you by Men's Room Original Sausage. Available through Uli's World Famous Sausage, MensRoomLive.com, and other fine retailers. Mmm, Shrine of Flat. Coming with Trigger Tells of the Shop of the Day, the return of No S. Sherlock is on the way as well, but first. Time to open wide and sample Ted's meat and potatoes. Now, here's your host, head chef of the men's room, the Ted Nougat. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Good to see everybody out here today. What do you think is some of the happiest times of your life? Childhood. On a day-to-day basis. Oh, on sorry. a day-to-day. Yeah, because I, I don't mean Man, like, I couldn't get the words out of my mouth. Ha- well, because I... Sorry. I was about to reflect and be happy, man. I like, know. That's a but great you, question. No offense, but you're both parents. You're going to be like, oh, the, the birth of my quiet. kid. No. <laughs> quiet. Listen, like, that's a weird retrospective awesome. Like, it was awesome, but it's also weird because I love this weird-looking mm-hmm. slammy bug, I think. That's the sad truth. Uh, like, on a day-to-day basis, what's something that gives you joy? Eating, my believe it or not, I like Food, eating. Yeah. Right? Oh, Tomorrow's not yeah. percent right. I like to eat. I love my kids, so. <laughs> oh, some people. This day to day, I'm a weekend <laughs> dad. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm like a part timer. Okay. okay, well, if I'm being honest, then eating. Yeah. Cinnamon Toast Crunch after the kids go to bed because they still. don't even know about it. I, you know, I got to say, sometimes I respect when an athlete goes, this is the best day of my life. I mean, after the two kids. I know, yeah, it's always it. it. No, yeah, no, yeah, baby, yeah. I love you too. I love you too. Yeah, yeah. That was cool. <laughs> I like who didn't want to be up at 3.30 in the morning staring at a pregnant woman's vagina. That was right. awesome. Thanks. So no matter, no matter how bad things are going, basically there's a new survey that said 76% of people say on the average day their happiest moment is when they're eating. Yeah. Now. Does that include people on diets? Because they, man. It depends People on, on diet. You hear it all through the office, right? Most people try to eat at least healthy so I'll roll into the kitchen and someone's heating up whatever they're heating up. And it's just the look on their face is just more like, I think it's ah, this is sustenance. I think it's either going to be breakfast or it's going to be dinner. Because I think bre- dinner. Breakfast, you can get excited on the weekend. You went out, you go out. You know what I mean? Maybe you get up and you go someplace and you have like a big ass breakfast, right? Yeah. But lunch is kind of like that thing where you're not supposed to eat that much, but you should eat something. Oh, uh, hell like, with that. People like pick salads and like you eat fruit and, and you know, it's like. Eat, I'll eat fruit as a snack today. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's a, but it's not that it doesn't excite it's you. I am. And when you eat it, it's not that it's not good because you're like, you know what? I really actually like fruit, but it's like. It's not like you're, it's not a deep fried shape. You, you don't got a goddamn blooming onion in front of you and some ribs <laughs> or something. Right, you know what right. I mean? Like that makes me happy. Yeah, I know it's not the best thing I should be eating, but I mean, I'm no, but excited. That's, and you're right. Twenty uh, percent of people said eating is more enjoyable than getting it on. The oh, survey oh, also oh, oh, found oh, oh, oh. the ten foods that make us happiest. They're in okay. no particular order. So hit a number. Hit a number. All right, <laughs> hit a number. Let's see here. All right, uh, any number will do. All right. Nine, number nine. Chocolate. Oh, sure, man. Pure and simple. People like chocolate. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people, I think, are like me. It's the older you get, it's like, I used to only like milk chocolate. Now it's like, I like dark chocolate, too. Why does that happen? Because you're right, man. It's, they're uh, all invited my, to my party now. Something changes on your tongue or something, man. Well, I know uh, for yeah, a fact. As a kid, I hated the special darks. They come in the mini pack of the Hershey's. Maybe because they're bitter, man. Yeah, and over, now I love them. Over time, your taste buds do erode a bit. So and you're older, not as sensitive to taste. So a lot of times, I didn't like this as a kid. I like it now. A lot of times, you just don't taste it. And, and, pungent. and the yeah. older you get, the more you become like things you eat. So it's like, look, everybody gets a little more bitter. The older they get. <laughs> Dude, that's our chocolate. Oh, four. Jesus. <laughs> pizza. All right. All right. <laughs> pizza. I mean, pizza's pizza. Pizza's delicious. I'm smiling just saying the word pizza. We were talking about earlier. Yeah, Have you ever just, met anyone who doesn't like pizza? Yes. No. no. Yeah, man. No. Weird ass Jeremy does. Oh, oh that's one guy. Yeah. yeah, but his reason it's now but he understand. Has a great reason, but it's still awkward. I can't get it's past it. It's weird, but it's because of how much he was exposed to his kid based on his dad's jack. It's not that he doesn't like the taste. You know what yeah. I mean? That's okay. what I'm saying. Right. We need a number, man. <laughs> oh, any number will do. Two. Number two. Fried foods. Sure. Again, I like your food. Most, you know what? I'll, I'll cut it down for you. Most of the list is stuff that's not awesome for you. Fried foods, mm-hmm. burgers, sure. ice cream, brownies, cheese. I would say the three that are probably okay is like steak. Sure. Right? You need a steak. Steak. Sp- steak's awesome. Spicy food. Okay. Yep. And then pasta. Now, granted, I think you probably give me that look. There's so many options on pasta. I love now. Pasta. Pasta's back at everybody's. Yeah, I'm a huge I, pasta I, guy. I have no man. problem with pasta. I, I <laughs> wish I could eat it every day. Well, you can. Now that's, yeah, yeah, you're right. I could. <laughs> what yeah. does it do to you? What's, what's the evil? Of pasta? Oh, I'd be like a forty-inch waist. 
Really? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I had a buddy that ate pasta every day when he was like 22 or whatever, right? And it seemed like a joke. He is a very large man now. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, All right. Like, like, I think he <laughs> I stuck to stop, that. Right? <laughs> he stuck with that since we were in our early 20s. Noted. Now, on the other side, uh, they did some, uh, basically they found out which food terms are the least appealing to us. Okay. I think I can nail some of these. All right. Shoot. Vegan. Vegan is number one. Yes. Oh, hell 35% yeah. 35% yes. say it makes food less appealing. All right. Let me see if I can continue my role. And it might not even be the food. It's is it the a, people it associated. The term uh, gluten-free. Gluten-free comes in fifth on the list. All right. All right. Okay. Yeah, Got to be uh, there. Da, 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 da. Uh, You're on the right path here, Miles. Vegetarian. <laughs> vegetarian does not make sense. Uh, 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 healthy. Uh, Low fat. Uh, no. Let's see. Well, Sugar-free. Fat free. Fat-free, sugar-free okay. both make the list, yeah. along with just the term diet. Yeah, oh, man. So diet anything, just negative term. Well, but, what's not going to be as good? Like this. Diet, basically, anytime you see the term diet, this is how I perceive it. Okay? And this has nothing to do with my weight or anything. It's when you say diet on a product that you're otherwise familiar with, it means it doesn't taste as good as the product you actually it's want like to eat. Ba- it's like so baked. It's like you have a better chance of me buying something that's healthy, but I'd never heard of it before, right? So if you Miles' chips, and they're organic, they're healthy, they're blah, blah, blah. There's a better chance I'd buy that than if there's Ted chips that I've always known, and then it says diet Ted chips. It's like They will say then, baked. The then term in the chip then, world is baked. But then it's almost a Ted chip. I don't well, almost right, like want sodas a Ted do it all the time, right? Yeah. If you say diet... I know what it's going to taste like. It's it tastes like crap. Almost going to taste like Dr. Pepper. Because even when you drink diet soda, generally people will go, "This is the best diet soda of the diet sodas." Do- diet exactly. Dr. Pepper. It's its own <laughs> thing. Yeah. It's like K. Rabby. You know what I mean? Right. Like, you know what it is. It sucks. It comes from the ocean, it, you might but it's just not crap. Have the original. No, it's tiny little red fish that they push together. It's like I saw <laughs> baked Cheetos the other day. I'm like, who does this? Right, exactly. I mean, They're like, warning you. you know, it's like diet cake. Like, yeah. Okay, all right. That uh, no, that's gluten-free that cake. Sucks. Some of these on the bottom half are kind of weird. Organic comes on there. Sure. But organic, I'll be dead honest with you, organic is does not mean healthy. It just means it's organic. Yeah, but yeah. the problem is, and they like I think it was a good sales pitch initially, right? Because people did not give a lot of thought to what it actually means. So you translate it as healthy. But as a result of that, even though it's a pretty meaningless thing to put on your product, when you do it, you turn a bunch of people off. Um, Even though I, it doesn't mean my, anything. My produce guy told me that the asparagus, it's organic, and the asparagus, it's not organic, with a $4 difference, comes from the same farm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, low calorie. Remember, these are uh, mm-hmm. least appealing food uh-huh. terms. Yeah. Uh, low calorie, parent approved. <laughs> well, nobody wants to see that if you're a kid. Yeah, this on one, anything. This right. one kind of bugs me. Ethically sourced. Like, dang. Like, why does that make the food taste worse? Right, man. Like there wasn't stores? a slave that picked this one. Right, exactly. like, that seems like that should help. What is food. that? I want factory right, children. Yeah, right. right? Like, damn. <laughs> wow. it's, it's awfully yeah. harsh. Ethically sourced. And then sustainably sourced. Sustainably sourced. So right. do you right. think then maybe uh, if I'm going to put out a product and you have a problem with ethically sourced, like inorganic, non-ethically sourced, like... We have children laborers that provided this pig that's been fed nothing but steroids. This is going to be a huge hit, right? Yeah, but I'm saying most of this this list of the least appealing food terms makes sense. I'm just sure. like ethically sourced. That's like that's like, wrong. Me, that's like man. a bonus. Like you're, maybe I'm buying something yeah. I shouldn't be. Right. It's like a thing of ice cream. Then it's like, oh wait a minute, it's ethically sourced. And the thing is, it makes this ice cream fine. It, it buys me a billionth of a second of feeling good about myself. Right? Because Until you realize what you're eating. Well, I'm not going to remember that it was ethically sourced by the time I get around to eating it, but I do know at the moment I buy it, like, hey, man, good on me. But if yeah. you said, what did you buy that's ethically sourced? I, I, I really don't remember. Yeah, exactly. It and again, uh, vegan was number one on the list of the least appealing food I terms. believe that. Thank you, Head Chef. We appreciate it. Coming up, we're going to drink and toast with a shot of the day. Mm-hmm. The return of Noah Sherlock is coming up next. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. Welcome back to the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. Coming up, we will drink. We will toast. The shot of the day is on the way. But first, our own Steve the Thrill Hill combs the globe. Picks it. Looking for stories with headlines and screams. Well, no, sh- Sherlock. Headline reads, people are getting dumber. That's the actual headline. It says, according to a new study, all right, people actually are getting dumber. The research is... <laughs> <laughs> no sh- Sherlock! Must have misfired. It says, the researchers found that the average IQ of every generation is about seven points lower than the previous generation. They believe it's because of worse education, worse nutrition, and more exposure to media. Hmm. 
But yeah, whatever it is, okay. they're saying like the seven. I think it's seven not, points lower. It's kind of on a, ironic because most people I meet are experts. Oh, everybody knows everything. You didn't mm-hmm. know that? Goodness gracious. Survey says fathers are tired of seeing doofus dads in advertising. Really? Well, no, sh- Sherlock. Like, it doesn't bother me, you know, but I'm looking at this and I'm like, do my kids think I'm that stupid? Am I that stupid? I guess I'll never know. We continue. Theft rise. Theft. Thefts rise in California after California reduces criminal penalties. Gee willikers, are you kidding? I cannot believe it. No sh- Sherlock. So they pulled some move. I want to say they reduced certain felonies to misdemeanors, and I don't have the list of what those are, but obviously theft is one of them. So people are like, hell, I can deal with a misdemeanor. Yeah. Like, you're, you're a lot more comfortable with a misdemeanor than a felony. Like, even if it comes up, yeah, I went to jail, man, it was a misdemeanor. People are kind of like, all right, you're not dangerous, you're not bad, you're stupid, right? You made a stupid decision. Nobody on a, a job application says, do you have a misdemeanor? You know what, that's a good point. It's always, <laughs> do you have a felony? We continue. Being black in America could be hazardous to your health. No, oh, sh- oh, man. Sherlock! Happy to read that. Anti-vaccine hotspots thrive in states that make it easy to opt out of vaccines. Oh, no, sh- Sherlock! Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I mean, that'd be true of anything, right? People who overestimate their understanding of political issues are more likely to believe in conspiracy theories. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. No, sh- Sherlock. I don't get what's going on, huh? My thing. My thing this. My cousin told me this. Birth rates dropped most in counties where home values grew most. Really? Well, no, sh- Sherlock. We could have another kid, but baby, this house is worth a whole lot of money. You know what I mean? Hang on to that dough. Let us hang on to that dough. I will hit you with one more. I believe we may have shared this one before. I'm not sure, but uh, too much bad news can literally affect your health. Well, no, sh- Sherlock. <laughs> Thank you, Steve Martin. We made you drink it time. Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. And the men's room knows just who it is. So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. You're the toast of our shot of the day. Drink time it is, and as usual, we head to the drink desk and Stephen Throw Hill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed. Today we toast an anonymous woman from Los Angeles, California. A. And I wish I could be as cool under pressure in a life or death situation as this particular woman. A family in Los Angeles, of which she is the matriarch. They were heading home from a water park on a Saturday night, and they stopped at a taco truck for dinner. That's when a 38-year-old man named Juan Rodriguez walked up to them and told them that he was an undercover cop, even flashed a gun. Well, the mother's instincts kicked in immediately and knew that he was not a cop. She also knew that she had to protect her four children, her husband, and herself. So what did she do? She handed him a taco. She handed the man a taco. He took the taco, and then she told him that she'd go grab him a few napkins. So she went up to the people working on the truck and calmly told them not to look, but the man was threatening her family with a gun and asked them to call 911. And then they did. The cops came and arrested Juan for child endangerment and impersonating a police officer. He also, believe it or not, had several outstanding warrants for his arrest. Shocking. The think, the quick thinking of the mother. Hold this taco. I know I love that. Hey. Would you like a taco? I mean, it's a perfect plan. Yeah, that happened. That could happen to any of us. It would happen to any of us. I mean, I would have done it, right? Because you roll up there. You know you're running the cons. You're obviously a taco. You're like, I got him hook, line, and sinker. This mom is so stupid and so nice. She's actually going to hook me up, mm-hmm. and there you go. Yeah, he was just trying to rob her, right? That's exactly She's what he was giving up tacos. Yeah, man. like a bonus. She just wanted to protect her kids. Yeah. Ah, the old taco trick. We pour this booze and we drink this booze because we think it's yummy. Yummy! So over the tongue and down the throat to party in our tummies. Down the hola, bitchola! Let's get a contestant on the line for profile. This will take color 9 844 Ola. Ola! The shenanigans continue on the Men's Room Radio Network. <laughs> 